What's up, everybody? Welcome back. Before we jump into today's video, I have a very exciting announcement. I've recently partnered with my local film lab, Speedy ePhoto, to get you guys 10% off your orders for the next month from now until March 15th. And I'll talk about that more in just a second. But I've been using Speedy ePhoto for the past year and a half or so now, and they have developed and scanned the majority of my work. And I really can't say enough good things about them. They are a family run business. They've been doing it for almost 40 years now. So they definitely know what they are doing. They're extremely knowledgeable, extremely friendly, and always a breeze to work with. A couple of my favorite things about Speedy ePhoto, one, the quality. They always blow me away with how rich and natural the colors are on their scans. They scanned all of my Europe negatives, and I found myself not even wanting to touch them in Lightroom because they got the colors so pinpoint accurate to how I actually remembered those moments being in real life. They do a fully manual scanning process. They key the highlights and shadows and make sure that you guys are getting the most amount of detail you can out of your negatives. Once I saw the difference between an automated scan and Speedy ePhoto's manual scan, I was completely shocked. I mean, the difference is mind boggling, and it really reassured me that I am getting the highest quality results results from Speedy ePhoto. And the other thing I love about Speedy ePhoto is the timeliness. For C41 film, it's usually a two hour turnaround time, which is absolutely ridiculous. And for black and white film, it's usually only two days. So even if you're mailing your film in, you can still expect to get your scans back delivered via Dropbox in a very timely manner. So with all that being said, I'm very excited to give you guys the opportunity to get 10% off your orders with Speedy ePhoto for the next month. From now until March 15th, if you guys are mailing film in, all you have to do is put your film in a padded envelope along with a note card or piece of paper with your name, email address, and phone number on there, and then write my name on there as well. Once they receive your mail, they will shoot you a request via PayPal with that 10% discount. And if you guys are walking into the store, just drop your film off with them. Mention my name, mention the discount, and they'll hook you up with 10% off. I will leave a link to their website and their mailing address in the description below so you guys know where to mail your film to. And if you have any other questions, you can visit their website and contact them there. Guys, I'm super excited for you to try Speedy ePhoto out and get some high quality, affordable scans in a timely manner. Without further ado, let's jump into today's video. Alicia and I just uh, are driving to Allensburg and there's windmills at the top and there's a thick fog layer and they're just barely poking out through the fog. Oaks. Very, very cool. 11 and a half of 500. I really hope this is right. Gosh, just like riding a bike, you know? Just comes right back to you. <laughs> God, it just feels good to shoot this camera again. And I love these grasses. Sometimes I just get too fired up. Oh wait, I have, I have more shots. I'm shooting six by six. Got an extra two shots in here. <laughs> Come on. Okay. 
This first trip out to central Washington was a real tease. We lucked out with a thin fog layer windmill combination and thankfully, the infamous van was still posted up at the Summit Inn. God, I hope it never leaves. While the overcast offered some unique perspectives, I was eager to come back on a sunny day and explore more of the area. Come back on a sunny day I did, and boy am I glad. There was a different kind of energy in the air, a better energy. I could tell it was going to be one of those days where even if I didn't get any good pictures, I was still going to have a damn good time. pulled off simply because this is the biggest flag I think I've ever seen in my life. I'm hoping to get a big gust of wind to push through, lift it up a little bit so I can see it in all its glory and then uh, grab the picture. Oh, come on. Perfect. Yes. Oh my gosh. It finally unraveled itself. Why do American interstates make for such intriguing images? The nostalgia, the heavy dose of Americana, or maybe it's because after all these years, not much has changed. While it's obviously a mixture of all three and so much more, I think my fascination with these strips of asphalt lies in the fact that all these roads and the people that drive on them have millions of stories to tell, most of which will forever go untold. Day ain't over yet, chaps. Let's see what Highway 10 has to offer. I think I'm gonna use the Bronica's light meter for the rest of the day because I trust it more than the wife that I don't have. Well, speaking of the Bronica, I think I'm gonna load up some Portrait 400, shoot a roll through it, get some square images. I've missed shooting on this thing so much and I feel like I need to make up for lost time. been enjoying shooting on the Instax wide recently. I'm going to grab a picture of that composition with the barn and the windmills in it. I'm going to grab one more picture of the same frame on the Pentax just to complete the trifecta get one on all three cameras. And just for funsies, I'm gonna guess the exposure. F8 of one, 1 125th, Portra 160 in the Pentax here.
got a pretty fun composition here off to the side of the road, this drainage puddle with a couple of windmills in the background. Time to put another roll in the Pentax. Gonna load up Porsche 400. There's one image that I want to get on the uh, 105 lens on the Pentax. Classic loading the film in direct sunlight to get the video shot. With a few frames left in both the Bronica and the Pentax, I was searching for a nice lookout to grab an image of Mount Stewart, a 9,400 foot peak just north of Cleelum. I found a promising ridge on Google Maps, but unfortunately the mountain view was obstructed. I managed to grab this image, which would have been quite nice if not for the subtle light leak that the Bronica has apparently been plagued with. Shortly after, I drove deeper into the Cascades in hopes of finding a better vantage point. There's no parking anywhere, so I literally just parked my car on the road to get this shot, but this is exactly what I was looking for. It's not of Mount Stewart, unfortunately, but still a breathtaking view of some of the surrounding mountains. About to lose all of the light here. Let me grab one last picture on the Pentax and then we will call it a day. All right, lost that light really quickly. And we had some very thin cloud coverage come and block off the mountain just a hair. So I think that first exposure on the Bronica is gonna be the way to go. JK, I lied, I'm grabbing a couple more on the Pentax. So I checked the meter on my phone. It was saying F11 at 160th. Pulled out the Bronica, used that built-in meter. It was saying F11 at 115th. Bronica has never steered me wrong, so we're going with the Bronica. F11, 115th. For the third and final day of shooting in central Washington, Alicia and I decided to head out to Leavenworth, a small Bavarian-styled village nestled in the Cascades. It's home to great food, great beer, and hopefully, some great photos. I thought you was an angel. You flew away just like a bird. I thought you was an angel. You flew away. You know what they say, you gotta let the shutter surprise you. It's like shooting a gun, you can't pull the trigger slow enough, you know? It's a beautiful thing, it really is. Spread your pretty wings, let me deep inside, when you was good and satisfied, away you would fly with. Nice. You flew away just like a bird. I tripped to heaven, was a detail. I'm kind of just ripping these pictures without even thinking, and it's, it could be really powerful or it could be really stupid. Be a robin red breast or a squawking blue jay. Might be the devil's own raven It don't matter no how in a way Honey, you ain't no angel You flew away Just like a bird Our trip to heaven Was a detour Through hell Holy shit 
Bro, there's like four racks of beer in here. It's like empty cans everywhere. Blowing out the highlights. Yeah. <laughs> oh. Give it that pre dunk smell. Oh, she's ready. Cut out caffeine about a month ago. Gotta find those creative alternatives, you know? <laughs> Fuck yeah. Might have to go again. That one hurt. Oh, that's a brain freeze. Oh, God. Oh, that's a brain freeze and a half. Holy fuck. Well, hey. You know what they say. Dunking your head in a river. It's pretty cool. <laughs> I fell. You ever fall and then you just kind of realize that it's kind of nice down here? Alicia and I headed into town to wrap up the night. We walked the streets, grabbed some food, and stopped at the absolute goaded gelato spot Via Dulce. Also, real quick, can we just appreciate that somebody actually put these Christmas lights up by hand? I mean, holy actual shit. It's funny to think that I used to view central Washington as a dry, dead, ugly, barren wasteland, when in reality, it's quite the opposite. Okay, well, maybe aside from the dry, dead, and barren part, but I've learned that all these things can make for an incredibly beautiful and unique landscape, and certainly lends itself to breathtaking photos. It almost feels like you're going back in time, in the best way possible. While I only scraped the surface of what lies out in these parts, my interest has peaked, and I'll be returning to learn more about this land and the people who call it home. Pink guava's a good 7 out of 10. Oh no, the sweet cream though. I knew it. Bro. It's so good. Pretty bomb. It's a good way to wrap up the night, huh?